Hi guys, welcome. We have some exciting news. We have ourselves a CSL DD. So let me put this down before um, we break it. Right, so I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, I've seen all the unboxing videos. I've seen all the review videos. We don't need another one. And I agree with you. That's why we're going to be looking at the most important thing. The most important thing of, uh, of all, which is would it make me faster? Now, I'm gonna test this, and obviously gonna test it with, um, against my old Club Sport wheelbase. And this is a 1.1 or something, so it's quite an old bell drive one, but it's done all right for me. You know, I'm about 3K I rating now, so I feel like, you know, I don't feel like it's really holding me back at all. Um, now, as a track I know well at the minute, Red Bull Ring, I've done hundreds of laps around there for World GT. So I'm gonna be doing 10 laps on this wheelbase, switching it off, doing 10 laps with the new one, taking an average of both, perhaps taking a few of the fastest laps and the first laps off, giving an average, and we'll see which one's faster. Right, let the testing begin. Okay guys, first round of testing is done. Now, as you see here, 205 laps I've done around this circuit, so I do know it quite well. Now, let's go into the times and we will see that we have this bunch of times here. Now, what I've decided to do is basically take the five quickest laps. Now, I know some of these say they're not clean, but they were, you know, what I mean, in fact, all these top five were actually clean laps and no off tracks or anything, which is quite important in Red Bull Ring really. So what I've done is I've added them together and divided them by five. So the five top laps gives me an average lap time of 130.308. So now it's time to get rid of the, the very trusty Club Sport Base 1.1 and put on the CSL DD and we'll see if we go any faster. Okay, welcome back. We have some results. So what you see on your screen are my laps, basically with the new CSL DD. Now I did have to do a few laps just to get used to it because honestly, it's very different. It feels really different. It kind of, it's pretty weird the way it kind of springs back. And obviously with the added torque, you, you kind of have to really turn the wheel much harder than I'm used to. So a lot of muscle memory to unlearn, but bear in mind, I've had this wheel base for one day okay um and these are my times so without further ado i've added up the top five times now you'll notice the fastest time is actually has, has an off track in it so what i've done is i've added a 10 because that is the amount of time that i actually gained through the first corner by running wide so i've added a 10th to this time i've added up the top five so the score to be is a 130.3 on average for the top five laps and the result is 130.2 or 130.21 so effectively i've gained a tenth of a second over my top five laps so is the cso dd faster yes it is it is faster which is great but there's something else when we look at the laps which is very interesting now you'll notice apart from that first lap the fastest lap which had an off track Look how many laps didn't have an off track. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight laps, perfectly clean, which around Red Bull Ring is pretty good and compares very well with the with my old wheel base. Also bear in mind that I've had the old, old wheel base for like two years now. And the amount of muscle memory that goes into it and the amount of muscle memory with that car and track combination, it's, it's remarkable. I, I, I honestly did not think I'd be able to match it without like a week's worth of practice, I'm learning that muscle memory and relearning it with the CSO DD. It's it's amazing. And also look at the spread of the of, of, of the times. Like compared to look at this. So we've got like a basically a point one, point one, point two, point two, point three, point three, point three, point four, point four, and then one lap which I kind of made a little mistake on. But apart from that, they're they're really close. And now let's compare that to the previous uh where is this here so this is with the belt drive 
and bear in mind this is this was a good session you know what i mean it was a uh, you know i really um i felt like i got the most out of it and i was really well trained in this look at the lap times right so we've got a point one a point two point three and then straight down point four point four point four point five point six point eight and a thirty point zero so the consistency with the CSLDD is on another level. I think that what that comes down to is basically you just get more feeling, especially going into the corner, so into the high speed corners. You just you can feel just that little bit more, and so you know whether to back out, whether to overcorrect. And I think that's why, although these laps are all quite clean, to be fair, there's only a few dirty ones, but it just felt like you don't have to back off as much because you know exactly what the car's doing especially on corner entry now i'd say now i'm, I'm using the recommended settings by fanatec for i racing i see mid corner it still kind of loads up and it just feels like it wants to spring back but there's no real kind of there's no good kind of feeling there but coming into the corner you get loads which is really where you need it so i'm very surprised does the csl dd make you faster yes and it probably makes you more consistent as well which is probably even more important thanks for watching guys i'll be back with um some more is it faster content soon um specifically prototype wheel versus a round wheel so i think that that should be an interesting one thanks for watching i'll see you soon